Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Wow Crendor, and welcome back to Fishing with Crendor. I should be casting my fishing thing. Uh, and today, I am joined by Michelle Morrow. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, they can't respond to you. Uh, so, uh, I guess I'll answer for them. Just be like, hey! They're all like, uh, hey, how are you? They're talking to me right now. We're watching Good guys, thank thing. you so much for asking us. I'm doing great. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really bad at like. Thanks introing. for having me on your show, Crendor. Yeah, no problem. Like fishing with Crendor. You're actually the first female guest I've had. What? I know. Possible. I didn't. I didn't even realize that. I was like, all right. I was like, wait, you'll be the first really? female one. How many episodes have you done? Um, this is the twenty-first. Twenty, twenty dudes first. Twenty <laughs> dudes. 20 dudes and 20 one girl. Dudes. Fishing with Red Door <laughs> series is now over. <laughs> Sounds like a Magic the Gathering convention. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, so, why don't you introduce yourself for people that don't know who you are? Oh, oh, God, I'm always, I always suck at this part. I'm Michelle Morrow, and I'm a host and an actress, um, and I'm the, the host for the virtual ticket for BlizzCon. Which is cool, and I did um, ESPN 2's uh, Heroes of the Dorm broadcast, which was crazy earlier this year. Do a lot yeah. of stuff with video games and um, and different outlets like 2K and oh my gosh, like oh I have a show at Polaris. I went at Nerdist. I have a stream on Geek and Sundry now. You're all over the place. It's crazy <laughs> going on. I'm I'm just glad to be fishing right now in my in my my sombrero here, my Haliskan brimmed hat, and my lovely black dress. Yeah, let me zoom in here. It looks, oh, yeah. it looks pretty awesome. It does look pretty awesome. It looks like you could be in that, uh, what happens before Brewfest, the Day of the Dead. Oh, yeah. It's like perfect for that. Yes, it is. So, uh, yeah, you're hosting the virtual ticket. That's really cool. When I saw that, I was like, damn. I know, you've right? Like, you've moved up the ladder. This is year two. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, last year I about lost my mind when I got it. I was like, I don't, even, I don't even know if I ever told you how I got it, but I don't like, think so. I went there. They were um, Cat Metzen or Cat Hunter, Cat Metzen, who had done in the show in the past. She decided to leave, so they had like she was. I think she was working at Cryptozoic or something, but so she decided to step down. She'd done it forever, and so they recast it. And they had a bunch of different people come out, and I got um, a phone call about it from a friend at Blizzard, Chad Wingrid, actually. Oh yeah, Chad. He's a yep. cool guy. The and pug he was guy. Like, the perky pug, and he was like, "Hey, they're doing these auditions. I want to throw your name in the hat." I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> Of course, I mean, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then they called me, called me in, and I had like three auditions, like one live one, and I didn't think I was gonna get it. Like some of the girls I was up against are like people I really deeply respect in the industry. Yeah. So I was like, dang, like there's just no way. So I'm like raid leading one one night as as I do, <laughs> and like. I can't remember what dungeon we were in because it was Pandaria, but um, I can't remember what it was. But we were we were doing something. And I was describing the boss fight, and I looked down at my phone. I get a notification. It says like, "Congratulations, we've chosen you to be our next host." I was like, "Holy shit!" And I just yelled, <laughs> "Holy shit!" over Vent because we still use that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and, um, and then I had to like I couldn't say anything. So I just ran, I was running around my apartment in circles being like, and my boyfriend was like, what's going on? I'm like, I fucking got it. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Like, I'm doing this. And, and so he had to go back into vent and tell everybody like, hey guys, we just need like a few minutes here. Like, <laughs> take, take bio. Um, so yeah. And then like when I was doing it, it was just so much fun the whole time. But it was different because like I'm used to going... I was used to going as a fan, you know, like yeah. the Warcraft lore panel. Like that's like my favorite panel ever. Like I was there for a red shirt guy. I saw that <laughs> live, okay? And I was like, this is glorious. Um, so 
like I I miss those things and I miss watching like the the arena tournaments in WoW and and just like the Heroes of the Storm one I'm really excited about for this year and Hearthstone even like I mean there's so many fun things to do like as a fan it's kind of like Disneyland for gamers like at least for Blizzard nerds like us like we're like oh hell yeah um, <laughs> but yeah but it was weird because like I experienced it in such a different way uh, but at the same time. I got to ask every question I wanted to every single dev because every single major dev comes up to the desk. And oh, I didn't even like, know that. Oh, yeah. So, like, last year, I mean, if you go back and look at it, but, like, anyone who buys the virtual ticket, they can watch, like, all the esports. They can watch um, all of the panels. They watch the opening ceremony. They watch the concert. They watch all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other stuff that happens is – Myself, and this year it's Alex Albrecht and Malik Forte, um, people can, from home, ask their questions and we'll answer them and ask the devs directly. So, like Mike Morheim comes up to the desk and you want to ask him something, or Chris Medson, or Chris Sigety, or Dustin Browder, or Ben Brode, or whoever, like from Blizzard, that is mm -hmm. going to be scheduled, and then we'll be answering the questions. So... It's kind of like you don't have to stand in the Q&A line at the panel itself. You can just, like, tweet at us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the social media interaction. Yeah, I suppose, kind of. But, like, I'm trying to get them to put it on the forums beforehand, like, get some questions. Just because, like, I really want people to feel like their questions were answered or they got, like... Or they're, like, part of the conversation because every single dev... I mean, I think last year I had... 17 interviews something like that Ooh, whoa it, like it there was a lot and so this year it's like that too so alex will be great and then malik's covering esports um and i'm i'm really pumped you're coming right of course i'm coming <laughs> <laughs> it's blizzcon are you excited for, go. what are you most excited for i don't really know to be honest i feel like i'm i just like going to blizzcon usually just to talk to people that's like my number one thing is just like hanging out with everyone. But then on top of that, I want to see Legion because I know they'll have Legion to uh, play. I know, right? And I don't know what the what it'll be to play, but I'll you know it's probably Demon Hunter, and I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, I would hope. I hope. I mean, I have zero knowledge of any of anything going on of like yeah. Bill stuff, but I would hope they would have Legion. Just like as a fan speaking, gosh. I yeah. So I mean, they said the beta is going to start before the end of the year. So like, that's I mean, pretty close. They did, with, they did it with Pandaria. I remember that year you could play. Yeah. Um, like there at the at the show at BlizzCon. Yeah, I remember that. I think they did that with the uh, Catac. Did they do that? With it? No, wait, no, not Cataclysm. I don't remember. Oh yeah, they had Pandaria and then Draenor. They did it with Draenor too. I think Draenor might have already, like... Draenor was already, like, beta. in beta, and, like, it came out, like, the week later. Yeah, that's right. So it's kind of like, hey, there's Draenor, and everyone's <laughs> like, we play already. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping they announce, like, a new Diablo thing. That'd be really cool, because Diablo's gotten a lot more popular, and I played it again. I know, it's so fun, right? Mm-hmm. It has that, like, Blizzard feel to it, which I really like, like, the fluidity mm -hmm. of everything, which is... Nice. Oh yeah, that's what I, w I wanted to ask you. When you got the email, I was like, "You've been accepted." I just like pictured it as one of those like stereotypical like you have joined the beta or something like you are you are the host. Congratulations. It's amazing. <laughs> Only it's like oh, it's like a one person invite beta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gives you like a key you have to enter yeah. to accept the host. Yeah, I like went in. I like scratched it off and like. <laughs> Redeem code. They like try scanning it. They're like, it's not working. I had to like it's, go to like the right. booty bay and talk to him and like get the get everything. <laughs> yeah, you have to complete a quest. Yeah, like that's what you have to do, Michelle. If you want to mm. host this, they should have. Okay. They would do that, and they I should like document it all. Like document <laughs> you doing all that to become the host. <laughs> Be the weirdest. Thing. If I was in charge of marketing, that's what I would do. <laughs> I'm just saying. What I was not prepared for, though, like, and I'm glad I wasn't prepared for this, is like. I knew it was going out, you know, to direct TV and like to this huge audience back home and stuff. But like what I didn't realize was that it would suddenly become on every screen in the entire convention <laughs> center. Yeah. And so like there was at one point, this opening ceremony and I had no idea, like suddenly my face would be plastered everywhere. And 
I just like looked up and I was just like wearing this purple shirt and I was like, oh my God, I'm like grimace. I'm going to eat everyone. Like I was huge. <laughs> I was this, this enormous because I was on this big, big screen and I was like, I can't look at that. I cannot ever look over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I was, yeah. And I was like on all the big screens. It was just really, really, it was very surreal. The whole thing was extremely surreal. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think we're more prepared this year, and um, I believe, rumor has it, we have a couch. Oh, man. Yeah, so, like, we have a Blizz couch. A and Blizz couch. Hashtag uh, Blizz couch. Hash, hashtag Blizz couch. <laughs> and, um, and I think they're setting it up so, like, some members of the community would be coming and coming to the Blizz couch to speak with us about BlizzCon. Nice. Yeah, I put your name on the list. Oh, nice. I'll definitely go to the Blizz couch. I thought you would enjoy Blizz. <laughs> I'll go anywhere where there's a couch. Unless <laughs> it's like some shady thing. I won't do that. <laughs> but like if it's a Blizzard couch. I mean, I guess if it's a shady Blizzard couch, I'd do I mean, <laughs> it's you know. a shady one, like one that's been in like <laughs> Old Shire Inn on the <laughs> barn or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you can't, you don't trust it. You know it's had some, some interesting times, but... <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, where are we going with this conversation? I don't even know. Uh, we're we're uh, by Karazan. Oh, yeah, I forgot to even mention that. We're by Karazan. It's good because like, Halloween's coming up, too. It's like a spooky... Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's super spooky. Uh, I love but... Karazan. Karazan was um, one of the first raids I ever did because I came in during Burning Crusade. Um, and this very one of the very first raids, this and um, Hygel. Mm. I, and like it was a, like people were running this because there was a pet you could get. You could get a vampiric battling mm -hmm. from here if you did like the boss. Oh God, which boss was it? It was the one you go upstairs. Like there's the first room where you kill the 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 horses that are in that inside of the. Yeah. the stable area. God, what was the guy's name upstairs? Anyway, you kill him. Wasn't and you that got the? What's it? What's it called? The uh, like the the room with all the tables, the feasts and stuff. Was that the one? I'm gonna find my pet. I'm going into my pet journal right now. Yeah, Here. what was that? Because you killed the you killed the stable guy, and then you went up the stairs, and it was like a dance hall. And then I think the first boss there was in the the it's feast room. Penrith. Right. Right. Penrith. That's what it says. I don't even remember. That's, That's all I remember. Oh wait. It says on it. oh wait, was there wasn't there a bat boss? Is that where it's from? Yeah, he's like upstairs. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Prince Tenris Merc Merkblood, and he's like upstairs, and you go kill him, and I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. His... Yeah. Now I remember. He dropped this little bat guy right here. This this one, and it was my, one of my very first pets. Like, well, one of my first pets in the game. I didn't understand at first, like when I played it, because my boy, like when I started playing this, I didn't understand a lot of what was going on. And, like <laughs> it was 2007, and that's like when I was in like the height of my injury shit. And my boyfriend brought home the game, and we were playing, and I couldn't even play the first 10 levels because I was so injured. So I would sit next to him, and he would just be like, "What do you want to do?" And I would tell him what I would want to go do in the game. And um, so, and this was like the first pet I tamed, and like. We just, we just always were like, played like that. So anyway, when we got up to the point of like, raiding, I had no idea what anything, like he was a warlock and I was a hunter and we were like two manning five mans because we didn't know what we were doing. And that has, by the way, like no resurrection abilities <laughs> 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 yeah. like, at all. And so we were like pet tanking, like two man pet tanking on it. It was really <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so I remember going into this place and just thinking it was just the coolest, coolest haunted house. If they, if they redid any dungeon, any raid in all of, all of Warcraft, I would want Karazhan. I would too. I think Karazhan is probably the best, like, starter instance I've done. Well, there was, a uh, was it? Ooh, was Ulduar. Was Ulduar like a starter instance? Ulduar is pretty good because th that was in ICC. That was yeah. right before that. And I mean, that's, that was actually a pretty good one because I think each one of the boss mechanics were, each one of the bosses were so well defined. Yeah. Um, well, I think that was, Ulduar was a great raid. 
Yeah, I thought that too. Uluar was probably one of my top, top five, maybe even like top three. Of all time. Yeah, of all time. What were the others? I really liked Uluar. Uh, the other two. I, hmm. I know, like, I have like this special attachment to Blackwing Lair, even oh. though like I don't think it was the best raid, but like I just have good memories of it. Yeah. Because I remember like beating Molten Core, and it's like, oh shit, dude, we're Did you do that during Vanilla? Yeah, during vanilla. God, I can't even fathom that. Like, <laughs> I already want to like kill myself half the time, and it's like <laughs> twenty-five people in my guild that I've known for years, and I'm like, oh my god, I swear, I can't even. Like during ICC days, our guild almost fell apart because of the pressure and the drama, and blah. Yeah. Um, and like, I can't even fathom forty man. Did yeah, you, forty like, man was great. It how was... did you guys even organize that? Where it, I mean, oh well, I didn't have god. to organize it. I just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was weird back then because like it was so like raiding was kind of like something you worked up to and then like earned instead of just being like hey let's go raid it's just, yeah. just like no you have to like start and then progress through like the tiers and everything it's like most yeah. people weren't even doing Blackwing Lair it's just like you're stuck it's like where are you in Molten Core right. it's like well right. we're on here. Gold Mag you know, yeah. and that's what was weird about. And so I was also in high school. So oh <laughs> back then I was just like, oh, I that, got Jackie. home, back, got home from school. No, I'm going to play WoW. That was all I did. Awesome. That's why I tell everyone I'm like, stay in school and play WoW, kids. I should have had WoW when I was in high school. That would have been awesome. <laughs> it literally, I would say it started at the perfect time because it was 04, 05. And I like started high school right then, and so like <laughs> throughout high school I just played WoW. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I'd be in the library, just like writing notes, like, "How am I gonna earn gold today?" <laughs> oh my god, I know, right? That was kind of a struggle, like, cause I was going through it, like, I wasn't, I didn't have much to do, so I played that auction house like crazy when I first started. I was like go trying to make gold, and I did everything. I have so many. Um, I have so many like achievements like in my guild. I took I took a while off too. I probably took oh, I was like nearing the end of Pandaria. I guess for almost a year. I got I got extremely busy and um, didn't have a ton of time and I kind of took a little bit of time off. Um, and I was number one in achievements in my guild and <laughs> left for a year and came, like I mean I would I would check in and stuff but like just not raiding and not doing that kind of stuff. And I came back and I'm like number two still or number three. <laughs> like, <laughs> like n nobody surpassed it. That's that's how much shit you can get done when you're in a neck brace. That's <laughs> that's not like every achievement. I'm like, yes, I have it. I need it all. I have to do everything. So um, I feel like wait. So all right, hold on. We gotta like rewind your life story. <laughs> it's like we kind of. I was usually. I'm like. So how do you start doing things? We progress through this, but we've like broken the. I meta. know. So. Well, we do because <laughs> it's hard because like I've known you for a little while now. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, I'm not like. Hey, I haven't talked to you before, so now we're gonna get to know each other. I know. Uh, yes. So why don't you what tell you everyone like? how you got into gaming and stuff? I got into gaming. Well. <laughs> I was very very young, um, but. My mom was like super big Star Trek fan, and William Shatner was the spokesman for the for one of the Commodore six, uh, one of the Commodore systems at the time. So my parents bought a Commodore sixty four computer, and so that's what I gamed on in the very beginning. And we had an Atari as well, Atari twenty six hundred, and so I had like combat and like just crazy games like pitfall yeah. like you know all that and then the um the computer was awesome because it had a bunch of like arcade games on it so it had like pac-man and like over time it would be like pac-man and Jumpman, which is one of my favorite games that's why i want to get there's a commodore 64 phone coming out that's android and i just want it only oh, for the whoa. games yeah i only want it for the games and like that's it um but it had like moon patrol and impossible mission and all these awesome games um and then I got an NES um, on my 10th birthday, 
and everyone freaked out. Like, and that was like a big deal because I was one of the only kids in the block that had it. Um, so everyone would come to my house after school. And yeah, you were that kid that was the cool kid because yeah, of that. I had it. I was I like, <laughs> I was like the cool kid on our one block, and I grew up, no joke, in this neighborhood called Camelot, and <laughs> on King Arthur Drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was yeah. All of the names of the whole street were like named after Knights of the Round Table and stuff. So, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So I grew up in Camelot, and um, so I had uh, an NES. Everything was all like magical and shit when I was a kid. It really was. It was like, <laughs> magical had, and shit. Yeah, I had a pretty good childhood. I I did. Like things were cool, but like yeah, I had an NES and. You used to have to like go stand in line at the Toys R Us like when a new game would come out. It was a big. I remember when Super Mario Brothers two came out, and we like we would go and it was like before your birth. Uh, we would yeah. go like run to like to the Toys R Us, and we were the very last people to get um, to get a ticket for it because they only had like hundred copies or whatever of the game. Yeah. And I remember getting the, the very last one, and then like. We would watch something like The Wizard, and it had Super Mario 3 in it, and that was the first time we had seen it. We freaked out. I remember they had an arcade at um, the airport. We went to, like, pick my mom up. She, like, traveled a bunch, and went to, like, go pick up my mom, and there was a Super Mario Brothers 3 arcade, and my sister and I tripped. We were like, oh, my God. Started playing the game a bunch, and she's, we stayed for, like, two hours at the airport just because just plugging quarters into it. Um so yeah, and like we, I mean, like growing up, that's pretty much all we did. Like we played video games. Um, I got really into Myst. Like that was a huge computer game for me. I love that game and that that studio, um, Science Studios, is, is from my hometown. It's from Spokane, Washington. So, which I didn't know at the time um, at all that there was like actually game development happening in Spokane, or didn't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a random place to like have game development. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah, they're still there. And I like had tweeted out recently about it. They're, they invited me to the studio. So I'm like, oh my God, hell yeah. I want to go back and replay that. But Legend of Zelda was a huge game for me. Like all the Zelda games. Um, yeah, I just, I played a lot. And then I kind of had a period where I didn't play a whole lot. Like I went to college and this is kind of like, you know, kind of pre, like I was in college in the late 90s. I'm 37. So like, it was, I don't know, like there wasn't online gaming. That wasn't kind of a deal, you yeah. know, because people would go and you'd play like Smash Brothers on N64 or something, or you would be like, there wasn't a whole lot of that. You would just go into people's dorm rooms and play games, see people playing, and you would play with each other sort of thing. Like everybody would just play yeah. games. But like it wasn't what it was. So then when I moved to L.A. in 2000, from like 2000 to like 2007, um, I was did a, a lot of horror movie acting, so I did like all these really like B horror movies, <laughs> and um, some of them still play on TV. But uh, yeah, they were really fun, and I had a great time. And I did like seven, seventeen movies. What's like the most popular one? Mm, probably Basement Jack, the the one I got injured on, the the last one, or I didn't get injured on it, but like after it, um, that one in particular, I think. Because that one still plays on TV, on, like, the Chiller channel or something, where, like, horror movies go to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I want to see one, because I know you're always, like, you watch the horror movie. Jack. Yeah, you can watch that one. I mean, it's one of those movies, like, it just, it, like, hangs in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's, like, it's, it's just, like, it's just, like, good enough that you're, like, yeah. And, like, if it had a little bit more money behind it, could have been, like, I think it could have been, like, a really cool serial killer franchise. Like, he's it's an interesting serial killer i haven't seen one like that before he like electric he gets like electrocuted and like i won't tell you like how but he like gets electrocuted a bunch well he was electrocuted by his mom a bunch and so he like trips out one day when there's an electrical storm kills her and then like hides out in people's basements watching them have families wishing he had a family and then, Ooh, except for when there's a big lightning storm. Oh, it takes place in Chicago, like right outside of Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. Where and at? Like, do you know where? I forget that. It, well, it wasn't. We didn't shoot it there, but the writer's from Chicago. His name is Brian Patrick O'Toole. Um, he wrote like Cemetery Gates as well, and he's probably wrote a bunch of horror movies. Um, anyway, so he wrote that, and so it's it. 
I'm trying to remember what the name of it because it was making fun of the suburbs, like how everything is yeah. like Grove or something. Oh yeah, there's like Deer Grove, Buffalo Grove. Yeah. Like so it's those. one of the Groves. Um, I can't remember. Downers which. Grove. Yeah, it might have been Downers Grove. That sounds really. It's a pretty big one. That sounds familiar, but it's one of the Groves, and yeah, so like. My family gets killed by Basement Jack, and then he gets put into, like, an insane asylum, and then he gets let out, and so he's... It's kind of like a horror movie western, I guess. Now it's, like, 11 years later, and he's hunting me, and I'm hunting him. Oh, so, wow. That does yeah, sound it's, cool. It's cool, and I have some really cool kick-ass fight scenes in it. I mean, it was a long time ago, but it was really, really fun. Um, but then I got injured, like, shortly after, so um, it was, like, a behind-the-scenes day, and, like... It was so I didn't really play video games during that time period like a whole lot because I was doing movies a lot. I had um I got a Nintendo Wii when it first came out in like 2007. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a film shoot in Kansas and my boyfriend sent it to me because there was nothing to do in that city at all. So <laughs> uh, me and this other girl on set we just went like in our free time because there was like it was like one strip of um of like stores and stuff and then in a movie theater and that was it we were staying at a hotel like it was like a motel essentially yeah. and um we would just like make me characters of of everyone on the set so like we would that's all we would do we would just like go get a beer somewhere like get a six pack and like go back to the <laughs> And just make everybody like little me's, and then finally we showed every. We would show people sometimes like what our collection was <laughs> because we're in like the middle of Kansas and there's nothing to do there. <laughs> yeah. I so again I brought a Nintendo system. It was like super cool because like everyone wanted to play like on set in my room because it was cool. We had the fighting <laughs> game, bowling game, and like you know like all the Nintendo Wii games. It's the running theme of you being the cool kid. With yeah, the it was really cool. I was like, yeah, I was like, video games, come on, let's hang out. Be um, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> so like, so yeah, like I don't know. Um, after that, I got injured. I was on an air ram and I went jumped on it and they use those in in like movies when there's a, like an explosion of some kind and you see someone like flying um, yeah. it's kind of like a trampoline on hydraulics so you stand on it and then it like thrift like lifts you off like 15 feet and like but i stood on it it was like uh, an optional behind the scenes day like i didn't have to go but i did because of course because <laughs> we just had fun on this whole movie right and you're like yeah. you can do stunts you know i had a stunt double but like you know, I can do stunts, like, oh, I'm going to do, because I did my own fighting, but I didn't do stuff like falling, you know, like that kind yeah. of stuff they usually want you to do, because if your actor gets hurt, then you got a continuity issue, you know, like, they can't yeah. do stuff, like, it's a problem, so, anyway, she, like, my stunt coordinator had, like, walked off, she was doing an interview, and I was like, okay, I'm going to jump on this, so, like, the thing was, the moment I stepped on it, it launched me up, so they didn't get to instruct me. Normally, like, you stand on it, and they're like, they tell you what you're supposed to do. And apparently what you were supposed to do is um, flip over on your back, but I didn't even know I was launching. Like, I just stepped oh. on it, poof, up in the air. So I went up, like, 15 feet, landed on my head. Oh, um, God. And it was in between these two mats, um, and I felt, I'm lucky I fell like that. Um, so I didn't know what happened. I just know it really hurt. Like it was the most painful thing. And I had just this sound and I can, it was the loudest sound because it's inside of your, your head. You can hear it like really, really loud and no one else can hear it, but it's just this kind of like this, this little sound. And, and I just laid there and all of a sudden everyone was like descending upon me. Like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I don't know what's going on. Everyone's like, lay down, stay down, don't do anything. So it must have looked really bad. <laughs> like, yeah. Because everyone <laughs> was around me. Was and it like, I, did your neck hurt? Or just like... Yeah, so like, I um, I got, I had a small hairline fracture in one of the facets, but that took like a very long time to find out. Um, so for a very long time, the di there was multiple diagnoses that I went through. Um it was uh, where I fractured was so so very lucky um, because it had, it had a broken somewhere else and like had a major break I would have been dead or paralyzed um, it, I was very lucky extremely extremely yeah. lucky <laughs> um, and I got a very severe sprain um, around it as well which is 
way more difficult to heal, actually, um, just because of all the ligaments and muscles and all that shit is like, no, I'm <laughs> traumatized by all of this. And you're like, no, you're not. Stop it. But you really are. Um, so like, uh, so then I, when I had also, I had fallen a couple years later, they found out that I had had an anatomical shift to the left when I fell. So sounds like when, something that happens in, like happens in space. <laughs> I know. If you zoom in on my character's vertebrae here on her back, uh, she so like it when I fell. Essentially, the my my clavicle, my collarbone, and my very first rib, which sits like right underneath your clavicle, mm -hmm. were pinching a major artery that goes down your arm, and I was losing feeling in my in my ring finger and my pinky finger on my left hand and my whole arm would go numb and I had one period where I went blind for oh. about 10 minutes and <laughs> yeah and I was like oh cool I can't see um actually I was like I, I, it was really horrible and they took me to the, all these doctors to try to see what was wrong nobody could figure it out so they figured out I have a it's called thoracic thoracic outlet syndrome a lot of times like you see that happen in like pitchers in baseball and like quarterbacks in football some basketball players it's a lot of like upper arm movement mm -hmm. um, and that's just what I happened to get so they had to remove my first rib uh, oh. so that sucked uh, <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> and they wouldn't let me keep it I was super what? pissed how do they not let you keep it no. like what are they going to do with it test it <laughs> it's like that's like wow You've had a lot of things. You know, like, I was like, dude, let me keep my rib. So, and they said they were going to let me. And then when I woke up from the surgery, I was like, the first thing I asked was, where's my rib? <laughs> that's not, that's not, that doesn't happen to many people. Where you'd be like, dude, let me keep my rib. And then the guy told me, he's like, well, it's a biohazard. And I, was, and I said, so are babies. <laughs> like, that's yeah. fine. Give it to me. Um, and I was hysterical for a little bit about that. Because <laughs> I wanted to put it like in a jar or something. And be yeah. Like, like the cob or something. It would just be crazy. Yeah. But like, <laughs> they wouldn't let me keep it. So I didn't get to keep it. But during that period prior to removing the rib, I, I uh, started playing Warcraft because my boyfriend and I had been together maybe. We'd known each other for a couple years prior to dating. And then... Like in 2007, we'd only been together for about six months when I got injured. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're still together. It's been eight and a half years. Um, but he, stay he stayed with me through the whole thing. And he brought World of Warcraft home. And he's like, hey, I think you'd really like this game. Because I was playing a bunch of PS2 games. He had a PS2 at the time. So I was playing like God of War and Bioshock. And I was really hooked on this like stupid Xbox Live game, uh, Luminous. Oh, yeah. That one. That's a good one. So, anyway, I was like, playing those games, and I love... Oh, and Borderlands. I love Borderlands. <laughs> yep. And then he's like, I think you'd really like this game, World of Warcraft. But um, that's about, like, when my my pinky and my my um, uh, ring finger were going out. And, like, so I'd be playing, and you would need, like, WASD, right, for the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So, like, my ring finger would be really weird, and I was... I couldn't, like, move it, and then my arm would go to sleep entirely. Um... So it's just really strange. Um, so like they can figure it out. That's nice. So then they removed the rib. Um, but during that time when I was playing Warcraft, I started to meet all these people. So like he and I, like I was telling you before, we'd like level together and read quest stuff in voice. <laughs> yeah. and like really dorky. <laughs> and we just had our own guild called the Disciples of Azriel because that was my cat's name. <laughs> um, and because <laughs> we are his disciples. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All hail cat. Yes, yes, all hell, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw your cat the other day. Okay. Yep, his name's Cat. Cat! His name's actually Kren Cat. Kren Cat! But it's cat. Uh, cat for short. Yeah, well. <laughs> Kren. So everyone's like, you named your cat Cat? I'm like, well, his full name's Kren Cat. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Duh. We had. We had a two-person guild, and I remember, like, trying to even, like, set up a guild. You had, like, bribe people, like, ten gold to sign your <laughs> Yeah. Please like... sign it. I just want to make my guild. <laughs> then you have, like, a feel bad because you're, like, kicking everyone out. Like, some people are like, why <laughs> yeah. did you I wanted to stay? And you're like, no, we just want our own huge guild thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I still want more storage. Um, 
yeah, so we like had a little guild, and then we just started doing questing and doing five mans and all this stuff, and finally joined a guild, and we did Karazhan, and we did um, Hyjal, and I think it was around, like, it was like about that time ICC started coming out, we had just made a guild Never Ender, so I've had Never Ender for a really long time. So, yeah, we had, I think we had just been doing, finishing Illidan stuff, and then, yeah, and then started Never Ender for, for Wrath days. And yeah, so then it was like, uh, around that time my house flooded, <laughs> I didn't have anywhere to live for like three months, uh, and that's where and, uh, Warcraft was really cool, because I'd like, you know, I'd like go to the conventions and talk about it. Like, I started, I guess I started like my career wise in it, like a few years. It was like 2009, 2010. I started to get like a little better. And the movie that I did, Basement Jack, came out and Fangoria was there, the magazine. And they were like, I was on the cover of their online thing. And they had they did this interview with me. And they were like, hey, if you could play any character past, present, future in any movie, what would it be? And I almost said Penny Lane. From Almost Famous, yeah. But he didn't because I was playing Warcraft. So I said, "Lady <laughs> Sylvanas in the World of Warcraft movie," because I knew Sam Raimi read Fangoria. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't really like think much about it outside of just like that guy just asked me that question. I had no idea that he was going to ask me that question, and so I just said it. I didn't mm. think it was going to be a big deal. And then all of a sudden, all these people started contacting me. You play World of Warcraft? You play World <laughs> of Warcraft? Yeah so <laughs> and like there's like a whole thing about it and like uh, people were asking me all these questions oh you're a girl I'm like huh you're well, a been... girl yeah and <laughs> I, like, I like when people inform that to me but like <laughs> when I was a kid you know like you know asking when I was starting I was never really and I've said this in interviews before like just sort of like when talking to friends like it was never about gender it was just like a new technology that was around the house it was like yeah. Not a uh, thing about like boys play video games and girls like dolls or something. Like it just didn't matter. Like video games didn't have any kind of gender bias toward it. It was just everyone did it. Yeah. Um. So like it was kind of this golden time. They call us the lucky ones. So I feel really good about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what they were calling this little part of this generation of like the digital era. But like. It was not a big deal, but all these people would ask me about it. So I guess my perspective on it is a little different than, I don't know, some people. But, like, for me, it was just, you know, I just always played games. So I didn't think it was a big thing. Yeah. So my answers were always just about, like, interests and stuff, like, that we were all doing, not, like, some kind of platform or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So... Mostly then people would ask me about Sylvanas because they did know the Warcraft movie was coming out and that got like, that was the whole thing. And then some girl made me a fan page um, because she had heard me at the WoW Insider party or maybe before that I had talked about it on, I think Trade Chat had interviewed me or something. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, she put me on some list or some video. And then like some girl made me a fan page and, um, and then Dodger. Of all people, <laughs> Dodger. Dodger made a video because some, I guess, a guy in my guild named Sly, or he was in my guild, had met her at, um, at like PAX or something, and he was like a huge fan of hers. Apparently, he had said something to her about like how this girl had made a fan page for me, and they like wanted me to be in the movie, and like I was still trying to like get my body back and like yeah. make, like just get like my shit together. <laughs> like I can see I again. But I was like, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe I can, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of factors, like not wear a neck brace. Um, but like, they, you know, if somebody makes you a fan page wanting you to be in a movie, what do you say? No, like, I mean, it just happened. Take that down. Right yeah, now. I just, I was like, whatever. I didn't think it was a big deal. And then Brooke made a video on like Coffee Time or one of her Dex Bonus things. I don't know which one. One of her dumb did. shows. One of her, one of her <laughs> shows. She's in Dodge. <laughs> She's, and she said, it happened to me on my birthday, too. She was like, everyone should go follow this girl, Michelle Morrow, because she wants to be in the Warcraft movie, and she's a fan, and I think that would be really cool, and she's an actress, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I didn't know what, I didn't know about the video or anything. Just suddenly, 
um, I went to my computer and I had like a gazillion new people on my fan page. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, where did this, <laughs> what just happened? So all these people were posting this video from Dodger, whom I didn't know. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. And <laughs> yeah, and then I think it was like around that BlizzCon I met you guys. Uh, like 2009, 2010, maybe like that. Like, I think it was 2010. And uh, yeah, and I just kind of like stuck around that scene and I started doing hosting in the video game world. Uh, I was hired by 2K and Gearbox to do live hosting for them and um, just started working with like Nerdist. I was writing for Hello Giggles. I, I was writing for Nerdist as well. Um, and I just started working all over the place, just doing my own thing and doing stuff for other people and then I had my own show with Bite Size TV for Chaotic Awesome and um, acted in a few things and did some voiceover and you did a now we're where we're at now. <laughs> you did the, the Hearthstone voice. I for, did. What's her? Illyria? Illyria Winter. Yeah. So like Sylvanas isn't in the movie and I don't know, but all I know is like back in 2009, I was like, I want to be Sylvanas Winter <laughs> in the movie, but like she's not in the movie. And instead, I got a voice, Illyria. So like I got close. Like, yeah. I did. I'm close. And I'm pretty close to all That's of That's a pretty them. good like. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty good like <laughs> secondary prize. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> Illyria Windrunner is like one of the coolest, coolest characters in all of Warcraft history. So. Holy shit, and when they said she's coming back to Legion, my, oh my god, I'm no joke, <laughs> jumping up and down on my couch alone at home, my boyfriend I was at work. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, Alex Afrasiabi said she's coming back. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lore nerd, so like, I was like really excited. Jesse's sure. also a lore nerd, but like, he's been more depressed about lore. <laughs> but that's because he gets so into it, and he's just like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Nothing adds up. You take the storylines, just just goes through. It just makes sense. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I guess the problem is because he used to be a history teacher. Yeah. So he like tries <laughs> to put everything into like some chronological thing that like this is the history, um, and it should be really. I mean, but there's yeah. you know when you start messing with time ways and you start having like time travel and stuff, you it's it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, but, you know, where we are, Karazhan here, this is, like, fully, like, first war lore stuff. I mean, this is, like, the home of Medivh. Oh, yeah. I haven't actually played, uh, like, Warcraft 1 or 2. Have you played, like, the Warcraft games? Like, way back when they very first came out um, on computers, like, <laughs> like friends. <laughs> this, like, that was, like, 1994. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, so wait, so you played Warcraft 1. I played Warcraft 1 and 2. Yeah, like when they would come out. Um, I played Warcraft 3. Um, so I was like, that's when I very first got introduced to Sylvanas. But, like, I didn't play it hardcore, you know? Um, yeah. We played it at friends' houses, kind of thing. Like, it wasn't the same kind of now. But, um, I mean, I've gone back and played Warcraft 1 on the anniversary just because I thought that was fun. Um, I have not gone back to play Warcraft 3 since since it came out and to do a full campaign. So you actually did, uh, you actually knew about Warcraft then before you played WoW. Yeah, yeah, I knew about Warcraft, but I just didn't, like, understand, I didn't get into, like, the full lore and story at that time either. Yeah. I was just kind of playing a game mindlessly. I wasn't into the story at that time. It wasn't until I... Was I was originally Ashari is my first character. I was originally a blood elf, but I'm super dork and I like RP death to become first. <laughs> <laughs> Just your own, make your own lore. I did. I threw myself off of Windrunner's fire and rose as an undead. <laughs> oh, dork. Oh, nerd. I know. Uh, it's horrible. It's weird for me because I never played like the Warcraft RTS games and then you should after, like stream them on an emulator or something well I played Warcraft 3 like the full campaign last year on my channel and so uh cause I was like I never played Warcraft 3 like I played the multiplayer but I never played the campaign everyone's like you never played the campaign so I literally played through the entire campaign on my channel 
like the original and Frozen Throne and everything, and it took like months, but I did it, and it felt did you very edit rewarding. Did you one of those things down too? Or What's you just that? do like full game video, like do you, do you like edit each one of those or you just go boom and put them all online? Oh, I would just like, I would start the recording, I played the level, and I stopped, and then I uploaded that. Wow. So it's like every level is like a video pretty much. It's just like, oh, and then it's weird because like I'd go through it and I'm like, whoa, this is Arthas. I'm like, this is him, <laughs> do it. this is before he's the Lich King. I'm like, oh wait, that's uh, this is before a while. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. was, or then like Rexar, like in my mind, yeah. all I knew about Rexar was just back in Vanilla WoW, he was really annoying to find, and so I hated him. Cause he's like he walked through Duratar, he? he would walk all around Duratar, and you for the Onyxia attunement, you oh had to go God. find him, and you'd be like Rexar, check out my like pendant or whatever, and he was like, oh yes, but you can never find him. So I'm like Rexar is an asshole, and then. After playing through Warcraft, I was like, I like Rexar now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like funny how your mind is iconic. Um, I mean, and I guess he, he made a return in Warcraft again this last expansion, too. Yeah. Now he's in Heroes of the Storm, although I hear he's not that great. I love him. Really? Yeah, I I've think he's I've heard he's really not fun. good. At least that's um, what Jesse told me. Jesse. <laughs> he is so opinionated about Heroes, but he also like... I mean, he's also pretty smart with that shit, but he I don't know. He's very salty. He's very salty. Very but salty. I actually egg it on when I play with him. So he'll be like, God, guy, did you do the thing? And I'm like, I think he did do the thing. I played one game with him <laughs> and he pinged. I was like, oh, cool. He's going to ping. I'm going to know where to go. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know where to go, but you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to thank you for not showing up to uh, Team Low Expectations at Mayhem Begins so that I could play. Oh, yeah, that's right. You didn't play, so I did. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you filled my spot well. Thank you. I kept yeah. your seat warm. Thank you. Let's go but... on. Undefeated. <laughs> that's Team true. Expectations. That was the name of my of my second guild. Like, my first, like guild with other people outside of Disciples of Azrael was team low, uh, or it was guild, our guild is low expectations. <laughs> you're just, you're always a part of the low expectations in some way. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but I guess, um, yeah, the Warcraft RTS stuff, I'd love to go back and play at some point. I, I need to do my Twitch channel. Maybe that's a good way to, to do it. Yeah, do that. That's a good way to, like, get it. Plus, like, a lot of people, I think, know you from, like, Warcraft stuff anyway. Yeah. Especially after your, like, Blizzard thing. Be like, watch me play the Ar the Warcraft 3 on my Twitch. I would, uh, yeah, I want to play all of it. I think it'd just be fun to do. But yeah. I guess Warcraft 3 is the only one that'd be really interesting to watch. But, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I want to just go back and, and play those for fun. I mean, I like going back and doing this dungeon, even. This this. Just going back and doing Karazhan is really fun. I know. It's like, it's always good to go back. It's weird because it's like the places in the game are like places in real life, in a way. It's like, people are like, I just have good memories of Grandma's house. And I'm like, I have good <laughs> memories of Molten Core. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it is good memories. It feels nice. <laughs> and it's like, it's so, like you make connect. That's what the, the big thing is with like social online games is you make connections to people and then a lot of times you don't even talk to those people after a while like for example i fished with oxhorn who like used to make a bunch of wild machinimas back in the day and he oh, logged yeah. on and he saw that someone had crafted his like gear because he was like looking through his stuff and he's like oh my god i haven't talked to that person in like forever and like oh. it's just he got all the fields just flooding back because he like Aww. didn't even think of that person for so long. It's Isn't just that like, crazy? It is crazy. Because it's like you'll go into a certain area and you'll hear music, like certain music in the game, mm -hmm. and you'll hear like um, the starting zone, the Blood Elf starting zone, because that's where I, when I started out, I was so like injured and done and like so isolated from the world at that point. Yeah. And if I hear that music, I, I, I like I was really injured so i just wanted to make cookie dough or eat cookies <laughs> like all day for ice cream. Yeah. so i hear the music in, in silver moon city and i want cookie dough like it's <laughs> an funny. immediate reaction i'm like i gotta make sugar cookies that's like uh i got a candle the other day 
and it's like this weird grape smell. But for some reason, when I smelled it, I like got instant flashback to like Burning Crusade. Like just, I don't know, like being in a, what's the forest? The, Which one? the what's it called? Not uh, the uh, Outland Forest. I should know it because it's in the night, the Draenor. What do you what? Uh, that forest, you know? Not Zanger Marsh, one below. Oh, uh, where oh where Shad is, uh, Terracar. Yeah, Terracar. Ba Boom. Uh, that's what I, I got flashbacks to like being in Terracar and leveling in Burning Crusade and eating Chinese food. <laughs> and I don't. Know, my mom must have like had a candle or something. That yeah. Was like that's because I smelled that and I was like, oh my god. That's crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy one. <laughs> yeah, it was so random, but like. It, it came to me. Did you ever get wow dreams? I've gotten a few like video game dreams. I usually have just crazy ass dreams though. Really? Yeah. Like what do you? What kind of dreams do you have? Well, I mean, when I was having when I first started playing WoW a lot, or when I go through periods of playing a lot, like weird things will happen. Like orcs will just show up as like a gas station attendant or like someone at the airport. <laughs> you're talking to and they'll just be like zug zug you're like what the fuck <laughs> stuff like that will show up um i had one where i was playing the auction house really hard like i was serious about the auction house <laughs> yeah. oh i even had a little outfit and everything and i had alt and i oh, I'd, I'd had it all um <laughs> <laughs> i made so much money and now i'm like i think i have like a thousand like 1900. Um, I'm so pathetic. Like, do you commonly have video game dreams? Well, I had one, and so like, the, I had it where it was like, it was uh, like a live auction, and it was the bankers, and it was like I was inside, but I was inside a storm wind, which was weird, and not Orgrimmar. No. Oh. That was odd. So I was at the storm wind auction house, like bidding on stuff. I felt like really weird. I don't think I've ever had like. I think I may have had like one wild WoW dream where I was like in WoW. I had one dream where I was playing and watching myself play. <laughs> that was kind of weird. I had I that's had a League a of YouTube. Legends. I think that's a YouTube dream. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I had a League of Legends dream. What uh, happened? I wrote down in my notepad, in League of Legends, take down Ezreal and Nocturne, get double kill. <laughs> <laughs> I write down a lot of my dreams. Do you? Uh, you have a Crendor dream journal? I do. So here's a peek into my brain. Uh, at the mall buying old PC stuff to sell for cheap and buy houses for $100. Dracula nobody likes and pauses when you say his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, feels weird about being recognized or something? I don't know. It's what I wrote down. Uh, also, snow zombies, snowmobile zombies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like, is the snowmobile itself a zombie, or you just mean a zombie is riding one? I don't even remember that dream. <laughs> I remember waking up and writing it down, but I don't remember the dream. Which is, like, some of these, like... Basically, oh, uh, you never need to do drugs ever in your life, because dreams <laughs> yeah. are, like, hallucinogens. Literally, just my dreams are drugs. <laughs> uh, haunted house controlled by haunted stuff, and try to talk but can't, and they turn power on and off... Uh, give them zombies and give in zombie doll. <laughs> like, I don't even, like... <laughs> that doesn't even make, that's not even coherent. I know. Drunk? I don't. Maybe my brain is drunk. <laughs> I just had, uh... I just had one I wrote down the other day. Where is this? Here we go. Endgame hacker finale dream. I'm going backwards in the what? air while Baltimore Ravens plan backfired on them. Holy shit! <laughs> I know the Baltimore like Ravens are screwed. <laughs> yeah. You're like predicting. I think so. I'm like, oh, here's one: carnival at school, Obama tickets for rides. <laughs> I remember like, that one too. Why? Why do they have Obama tickets for rides? That's what how you. Had to, that's the only tickets they accepted. For what rides? I don't remember the rides. <laughs> I would want to know what rides they were. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, this is why I write my dreams down, because they're just like, oh, here's one. There's a lot of details missing, though, that I feel like we need. I or wish I could, like... Them in. I know. I wish I had, like, full details of these dreams. This was a recent one. Why don't Brand you animate them out? <laughs> what? You could, you could animate them all out. Oh, that's a good idea. Friend or, pay someone friend, to animate. Crendomus. 
Oh yeah, it's all my predictions and dreams. All your predictions is true dream. I had a, uh, you'll appreciate this one, brand deal at EA with Jesse, but Dodger doesn't show up, so I am Dodger in weird game where we can remove land. My cousins are there, <laughs> and we all play, and then Dodger shows up. <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> You're just dreaming about life. <laughs> Like, what I do is I like to set my alarm so I wake up after, like, five or six hours, then I go back to sleep, and that's when I remember my dreams. Ooh, yeah. That's like a lucid dreaming that's... technique, but I don't lucid dream. I just remember my dreams. That's some hippie shit, Crendor. Yeah, man. I always feel like I'm going to get some crazy, like, ideas out of it, so I always write it down and try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, well, those are there's a lot of good ideas in there. Oh yeah, just so many good ideas. Snowmobile <laughs> zombies? Uh, yeah. I want them, like, just to imagine that um, something mechanical as a zombie. An undead <laughs> mech. <laughs> yeah, an undead mech. <laughs> I'd be afraid of an undead mech. Or mech would, zombies. Oh, oh mech my god. Mech zombies are amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. See? Look at that. I'm dreaming of, like, the next blockbuster hit. I'm renaming my battling... Mech zombie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that reminds. I wanted to tell a story of how when we first met, and I like <laughs> hover-handed. <laughs> That's <was laughs> so. I ran into you at the Wow Insider party. Yeah. And then you were like, "Wow, you make funny videos," and I was like, "Thanks." Yeah. <laughs> and That's then. Not, uh, that was about all you said. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're like, like let's get a... me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, let's get a picture. And then I hover handed. Yeah. It's like yeah. a it's more like a hover fingers. Yeah. Like... yeah. <laughs> you have to show the picture somewhere. It's yeah. Weird. It's probably it's on the like... internet. Just search like both our names, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's the one picture that will come up. <laughs> yeah. Is you hover handing me. And I look like a deer in headlights as well. <laughs> that was back when like I never actually like went to a convention. I'd never been on a plane. Really? And I'd never uh, really wait, like. I think you told me that at the party, and I was like, "Wait, what? How, who is this yeah. kid? How old <laughs> <I'd>, is he?" <laughs> I'd never been on a plane. I'd How never. How old were you? I was at five twenty. I think I was twenty-one. Holy shit! Yeah, I was twenty-one back then. That's and crazy. then, uh, like, I was super awkward. I blinked yeah. a lot. That's another thing. And so I've really, I've like grown as a person to the point where I've, I used to be just really awkward and now I've become like confident awkward. <laughs> Is that a new alignment or something? Yeah. Like where like if you're awkward, awkward like yeah, because <laughs> it's like, I, it's more like now I've used my awkwardness to like project humor by being confident yeah. in it. It's kind of like Tim and Eric anti-humor. Yeah, it is. You have grown quite a bit because I remember you were really shy, and I yeah. and I thought it just meant that you hated me. I was like, okay, he's like, <laughs> like some like young YouTube hotshot kid being cool guy. All right, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but really, you're just like shy. Really, and I was just shy nerd kid. Shy nerd kid, and um, yeah, and then like. You're like awesome now, and you do shit all the time. And your girlfriend is super cool, by the way. I remember meeting her at like PAX East. Yeah, she liked you too. She she's, was like, she's my favorite person I met there. She's really cool. She reminded me of you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, they fit together. Like they have this good little vibe. I was yeah, I like her. She's cool. Yeah, she'll be at BlizzCon again too. That's, where are you guys gonna stay? Do you guys figured it out? Well, always the Hilton. Always the Hilton. There's, always there's the Hilton. There's like all the parties are at the Hilton this year too. I know. Well, like every time, every BlizzCon, like the first BlizzCon, I stayed at like some hotel that was like half a mile away. I'd like walk there, and I was like, never again. Always Hilton. <laughs> so yeah. it's the right choice. I'm glad. I, I I think I saw in an email today that the that the WoW Insider Party, or, or the ZAM, or whatever the fuck it's called now, WoW yeah. Head, the, like, the third annual <laughs> <laughs> WoW Curse After Show, sponsored by Gatorade. Gatorade, power to the players. I don't know. 
<laughs> some some promotional shit. My favorite thing is just like making fun of all. <laughs> like, I know. It's so fun. I love like sports commentators. That's my favorite thing to do. I would be a sports announcer if I could. It's like tell you what, Joe. You know, you look at the guys out there. They're playing hard, but the chemistry isn't there. It's required for this type of thing. Back when I used to play, you know, it, it, it's a different football game. But yeah, if you really pay attention, you're going to see that John Adams has grown as a player. It's really his coaching, and he's really had a lot of coaching, especially the offensive line coach. He's had a lot of coaching. Brought him up. And, you know, back in my day, we didn't have that. It was just pure skill and talent. But the kids these days, I tell you what, Joe, it's, it's an all-new ball game. I think you're perfect for it. Thank you. <laughs> so I've watched so many sports, and they say the same generic things. You can do anything. You can apply it to anything. It's like Abathur making the big side plays out there. He puts his oh, his uh, his cue out out onto the guy. And he's oh observing with gravitas. Yeah. That's all. Like that yeah. people do. Like they observe. And Muradin has jumped in for the kill, but then Leoric is there with a skeletal swing, and and you're like, what? Yeah, it's but it's like, I would. <laughs> well, yeah, you got like the two guys. You got the the guys like announcing everything, and you got the color commentator. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, there's guys like, oh, the nice play is like, I haven't seen a play like that, Joe, since 1975. <laughs> <laughs> the, the old heroes of the storm brawl of <laughs> brawls. I don't know. <laughs> Last year. <laughs> From last year, it's just on a phenomenal. I love it. Uh, I don't even know how we got here. Now I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> going completely off track. No, uh, because you wanted to be a sports announcer. Yeah, I want to be a sports announcer. That's yeah. what I would be doing if I couldn't do YouTube. I'd be trying to do a sports sports announcing. But with but YouTube, I, said, I can do it anyway. With esports. I could do it with esports, but like I'm a mega like like actual like physical sport nerds of like baseball and football and but like I grew up watching that. Like I was a nerd, but also like a sports nerd. Yeah, no, I was I totally was too. I played softball my first year of college actually. I quit before the season started because I was like, <laughs> uh, why are we up at six in the morning working out? This stuff <laughs> gonna become a pro female softball player, so <laughs> Uh, I quit that. Um, but yeah, we like, I mean, I grew up going to Mariners games and everything, like even like in my hometown, we had like a super racist team called the Spokane Indians. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's still called that, but, uh, um, they're not the Redskins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, good. but yeah, I love sports too. Like, I don't know. I think they're awesome. So yeah, I think I, people I think like funny when people get really aggro about sports. It's, it's funny or, because like each each side gets very angry at the other ones. Where like I'm kind of in the middle and I like <laughs> both. Where it's like like the gamer people are like I hate those like baseball players. Or then like the athletes are like those oh, stupid nerds with their esports. I'm like I like I'm both. Just, of them. I'm a, yeah, I agree. <laughs> if you on this. Yeah, because it's. I don't know. They're both. They both require strategy. I think a lot of people see like even physical sports, and they don't think there's a lot of strategy involved in them. While like there's people lots like of strategy, especially yeah. in baseball, because people like watch football. Like there's nothing happening. I'm like, well, they're making adjustments in three four defense where the safety slide to the left, or they're bringing the nickel corner on the dime package because they're going to defend the run if they do an I formation slot post left right <laughs> to the center, and they're just like, oh, <laughs> it's like isn't it obvious? Oh my god, you're such a nerd. I know. I you're a total sports nerd. That's awesome. I know. That's how I like I mean, the thing is is that whatever you just said right there, like I know football and like but like like whatever you just said there, that could have been real or not real and yeah. I don't it either way. Part of it was real. <laughs> Part of it was just words of vocabulary I threw in there. <laughs> you should do it. Yeah. I mean, why don't you work some angle where they could be like, you could be the guest YouTuber on, uh, like, somewhere in Chicago. I mean, that's possible. Maybe like, I can, like, do the, the Cubs games Cubs? for when oh, they... Are you more of a football or baseball? I like football more, but I'm a Packers oh. fan. Oh, you're a Packers fan? Yep. So my dad was a Packers fan, and then I grew up a Packers oh. fan, and around Bears fans that are just like, why are you Packers fan? They're dumb. I was like, we've won Super Bowls recently. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, ah, Ditka. 
I was I've been excited in Seattle because I can finally say we have a football team. Yeah. Yeah. Although, last recently, they good for that. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. I like football. I like I lost interest in baseball for a while until the Cubs got good again. I know, and everyone was rooting for the Cubbies this year. Yeah. Everyone likes the Cubbies. Well, because like it would have been so awesome if it. I mean. Maybe they just meant they reverse sweeped. So like, they yeah. like swept, not they did sweep. And well, they weren't even supposed to do that good this year. They were supposed to be like 500 and like, we're rebuilding, but they ended up being really good. So they got like a, they got a bright future. And that's the main thing. See, and you're positive. I think that you should work the angle. Get Maker on it. Tell Maker. Yeah. Hey, look, guys, I want to cast i want to be there and be color commentary at a football game or a baseball game i guarantee they'll let you do it like or they'll yeah. figure out a way they are not guarantee they'll figure out something yeah i'll figure out something i can be the sideline reporter yeah know? why not it's like oh god out of crowd or on the field crowd or it's like it's like well i had a conversation with lebron <laughs> and you know he ate a chicken dinner before the game said that's his post pre-game and post-game meal, and uh, it really just energizes him above all the other food groups. So, uh, just an interesting tidbit. Back in the, back to the studio. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be an awesome experiment. Yeah, I think it would be too, because I'm I'd get to like do cool stuff. Either way. When I'm at Maker, when I'm at Polaris, I'm gonna tell people I'm gonna be like, "This is my right Yeah, you need you need to be my like my wingman. I will. I'm, I'm really good at that. I'll totally be your wingman on this. I'll be like, nice. this needs to happen. <laughs> I want to go to the game. Yeah. <laughs> and make it, make it so the Jumbotron thing comes on me at some point. Okay. And I'll be like, yay. Yeah. All right. I'll wear a Horde, I'll wear a horde t-shirt or something. <laughs> yeah. Wear a Horde t-shirt. And then uh, maybe maybe they'll like, it'll be like gamer day or something. It'll be like, we're honoring <laughs> video. Okay. It's the new sports. Back. That video gamers and gamers and sports people will come together as one on this day. Just be, be a, a happy day. family. That's all I want. Alright, so this is probably a good spot to end it. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you plug yourself at this point? Alright, well, if you want to watch the virtual tickets, if you buy the virtual ticket, I'll be on there. And if you want to ask any of the devs questions, you can tweet me at Michelle Morrow. Michelle spelled one L because that's how my mom spelled it. So, <laughs> it's Michelle Morrow across the board on, like, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. I think it's, like, Michelle Morrow official. I think I changed the fan page at mm. one point, so whatevs. Some pretty good branding right there. I know. It's the whole thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well... Uh, I'm always really bad at ending these, so... <laughs> <laughs> Tell people, Crandor, where can people find you? I mean, you can find me right here on this channel. <laughs> YouTube.com slash WildCrandor, or Twitter.com slash WildCrandor, or Twitch.tv slash Crandor, Facebook.com slash Crandor. Buy my sloth pants. <laughs> I got sloth pants now. They're sweatpants with me as a sloth on them hanging on. Wait, what? Yeah. That can't be real. Yeah, they are. I'm wearing them right now. No. Yeah. What? <laughs> like our animated. Geese? Well, like it's, it's cartoon me as a sloth. Like our animator Dan, he animated me. I love he's, it. He's your animator's your animator's good. Yeah, he's really good. He was like a fan. We randomly found. We're like, shit, dude, you're good. And he's like, I. Right. And then we just like started paying him. It's amazing. Jesse uses him for like all his stuff. Oh, yeah, I love the stuff. I love. I love it. I love you guys. It's both of the stuff. I like Dodgers, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think her animator is actually, like, friends with him. It's a cool story. Alright. Thank you for joining me on are the show. Still, are we, I thought we ended it. No. Pants. I'm still going. I thought you were, like, mole pants, I'm out. What were they? Sloth pants. Sloth, sloth pants. pants. I thought you were, I like, mic dropping on sloth pants. <laughs> I mean, I could edit it to where it does stop there, but I'm not going to. So, <laughs> <laughs> see you later, everybody. <laughs> Bye.